Haka and a new sunga, the new and nanny ha on so qua, the divo nanny ha tailor. Need so sony by night that kick a poo pot of water me, need for ha night that. Hello, my name is Taylor Thomas. My Indian name, my new and nanny ha is on so qua. Need doko nap shared this new nutty story with me when I was vying for the title of Miss Shoshone Bannock, and it is going to be about a zuni, a skeleton man. A skeleton man who has strong boha, strong medicine that he passes on to our Tsotsoni Banaita people so we can become good horse thieves. And that's what this story is going to be about. Abesh, Abesh. A long time ago, there was a group of scouts. And these scouts, they were traveling and they were on their way to go and steal horses. Bungu. On their way to steal horses, the group of men, they had made camp in Wapi, in a lot of cedar trees. And in these Wapi, these men had made a comfy camp, they had built their fire, set out everything for the night. And they were there for three days. And on their third night, the men could hear singing. And they could hear the singing coming from a distance. And at first it was really low, and they could hear it. And it was coming closer and closer and closer. Pretty soon, right on the edge of the wapi, the men had saw a dzuni. The dzuni had come out and he was singing the song. He had come from the wapi and he sat next to the first man. And he was sitting closer and closer and the man jumped up. He jumped up and he nuki and he ran and jumped on his bungu and hightailed it out of there. Next, the zuni, he went and sat next to another man. And he sat next to him and he got closer and closer. And that man jumped up and booked it out of the wapi, ran straight to his bungu and nuki and they went, they rode off into the distance. And there was another man and he went, he sat closer to him. And the Zuni went and got closer and closer. And the man jumped up and once again booked it out of the Wapi. And all the other men jumped up and ran with them. And they all left. They left so abruptly that they even left their fire going. The fire was going everything. All, all their belongings were all left there. So these men, when they got back to their camp, to their people's village, they had shared with them what they had saw in the Wapi. And it was a Zuni. There was a non-believer amongst the people. He said, I don't believe anything that you guys are saying. I don't believe that there's such thing as a duni, as a skeleton man. They said, yes, it's true, it's true. And the man said, well, where did you camp then? I want to go there and see for myself. So they said, okay. And they told him, they told him the journey it was to get there. So this man, he packed up his bags and him and his bungu, they left and he went and he finally got there. And he saw this big wapi, this big cedar tree that the man had talked about being camped under. And he got there, he camped and he was there for three days and nothing. He's like, ooh, I know those men were Isham. I know they were lying to me. And on the third night, the man began to hear singing. And he could hear singing in the distance. Singing and singing. And then it come closer and closer and closer. And right alongside the wapi, out come the Zuni. The man was so shocked and scared. The Zuni came out singing his song, came and sat next to the man and next to his fire. That Zuni come and come closer and closer. And the man looked at him in shock and disbelief that there was a Zuni sitting next to him. And that Zuni jumped on him and they fought and they rolled around rolling and rolling. That Zuni was really strong and started pulling that man, pulling him into the wapi, into the darkness. That man was fighting and fighting and fighting and trying to stay into the light. And pretty soon the Zuni got tired. His rib cage was just going up and down, up and down, up and down. And the man sat up and the Zuni sat next to him and said, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you run? Why didn't you nuki like the mother men? He said, well, I was curious. I was shocked. 
I was shocked that you were real, that you came out. And the Zuni said, because you didn't leave like the other men, I have some boha that I want to give you. I have some medicine that I want to give you. It's really powerful. But first, I need you to give me some dikka. The man said, okay, I can do that. He said, next, I want you to give me your AD. The man looked, said, okay, I'll give it to you. Then he said, I need your wehi. The man said, my wehi? I'm not gonna give you my wehi. You already took my dikka and my AD. He said, no, I need your wehi. The man sat and he thought there. He said, okay, I'll give you my wehi. The skeleton said, when I leave, I'm going to walk straight through these cedars and I'm going to walk to my gravesite and it's on a hillside. I want you to go there tomorrow, tomorrow morning at sunrise and I want you to bring these offerings to me. The man said, okay, I'll do that. The Zuni left and he went walking back into the Wapi, into the darkness singing his song. The next morning the man woke up. And he took these items, he gathered these items, and he packed up camp. And he followed, he followed the trail of the Zuni and walked through the Wapi. And he found the hillside that the Zuni was talking about. And he saw an old unmarked grave sitting there. And he knew that's where the Zuni was coming from. He knew that that was the Zuni's grave. And he laid out the dikka, he laid out the AD, and he laid out his wehi. And he began to feel overwhelmed with sadness. And he started to yagai, yagai, and sing that skeleton song, that Zuni song. He's standing there, feeling bad. And then the man was given his boha, and it was to be invisible. This powerful boha was a gift to him so he'd be able to steal horses, as many horses as he wanted. He went back to his people and he told them what had happened. He told them of the boha that the Zuni had given him. And so our people had become really good horse thieves. Acquired lots and lots of horses. Our Tsotsoni Banaita people are known to be amazing horsemen. This was a story told to me by Nidogo Nap that was shared with him from his appa na, Nizo. It's a powerful story and how it came about was Nidogo Nap was listening to some old cassette tapes and they were old Pawo cassette tapes. And as he was sitting there listening, he come across the Zuni song. He was shocked and in disbelief that this Zuni song was a song that other people were singing from other tribes and he was like, hey, that's the Duni song that Ni Appa shared with me. His Appa would sing this song as he'd be working in the fields. And he told his son Nidogo, Nidogo Nap these stories. The story about this Duni and the song that he sang and the boha that this song carries. And it was this song that spurred Nidogo's, Nidogo Nap's memory. And it helped him remember this story. And I'm grateful that Nidogo Nap had shared this story with me. And I'm grateful to be able to share it with all of you, this Dunati story. Usin Zan, thank you. And I hope that you enjoyed this story. And Mbunahi until next time. Us.